Hello, my name is Gordon Mutton and in this video I'm going to be talking about lathe cutting speeds. Three things. One, how to measure the spindle speed of your lathe in RPM. Two, how to convert that speed into linear cutting speed at the tool. And three, what cutting speeds are recommended for various metals and turning conditions. On my right here I have a Myford ML4 lathe, which is very old. When I acquired it I didn't know the, the speed of the chuck or the, the motor speed, the pulley ratios, I didn't know anything about it. So you might be in the same position, so this uh, will hopefully be helpful to you. Now, I started off by using the quickest possible method I, I could think of to measure the chuck speed. It goes too fast, even on its slowest uh, setting here, to count the number of revolutions by eye. So, I used my bicycle. I'm going to show you now just what I did. Carefully, you can. I've got my foot under the rear wheel, but you can just lean or rest the bicycle wheel onto the chuck, and now it's quite easy to measure the number of revs in one minute of this wheel. Knowing the diameter of the bicycle wheel there and the diameter of the chuck, uh, that ratio of diameters, I can multiply the, the 52 RPM that I got for my bicycle wheel and that factored up to 310 RPM on my chuck here. Now I've measured the pulleys and the ratio was just slightly, well, going on the inner diameter of the pulleys, which isn't really the way that they work, that you should use the pitch diameter, of course. But based on the inner diameters, the ratio looks like it's designed to be a factor of two to one. So each time I move the belt to the left, uh, my 310 gets doubled to 620, and then doubled again my maximum speed is 1240 RPM. Now another more accurate way to calculate the spindle speed is to use the back gears. On this ML4 lathe you remove the back gear cover with two screws that reveals the four uh, gears and you undo the clamp nut of the lay shaft, bring the lever up and then just nip up the clamp nut again so that the gears don't disengage while you're running the machine. Do not start the machine without removing the locking pin for the pulleys on the spindle. Normally the pulleys rotate at the same speed as the spindle but in this instance they will rotate at very different speeds. Put some oil in that hole and that will ensure that the, there is no wear between the pulley assembly and the spindle and just wipe off any excess oil. Now when you run the uh, machine, the chuck is moving far slower and the amount it's moving slower depends on the, the gear ratios that you have there. On my machine I added up the number of gear teeth on each gear and the gear ratio came out to be 5.96 
to 1. Now all you have to do is put some kind of mark on the chuck and count the number of revolutions that it does in uh, say one minute. Here you can see it's rotating at roughly once a second. Then multiply that up by your gear ratio, it gives you your normal chuck speed. Right, item two in this video is how to convert your RPM spindle speed to linear cutting speed. In each revolution, you will travel one circumference, which is pi times your diameter. You need to measure the diameter at which the tool is working. You can do this in inches or metric. Then it's a simple matter to multiply the RPM by pi times the diameter. In imperial units, divide by 12, converting inches into feet. And there's an example here that says 600 RPM, a diameter of 2 inches, calculating that to 314 feet per minute. Secondly, we have an example in metric units. Here you divide by 1000 to convert millimeter diameter into meters. So for 600 RPM and a diameter of 50 millimeters, this calculates to 94 meters per minute. Finally, the cutting speeds that are recommended. This page I got from Wikipedia, speeds and feeds. It includes uh, mild steel with and without coolant and aluminium with and without coolant. You can cut significantly faster if you're using a coolant. And down the bottom you can also see some plastic materials and wood. This is for a high-speed steel cutting tool. Now this second table I got from littlemachineshop.com and on the right you can see it has columns for speeds for high-speed steel tools and carbide tip tools. With the carbide tip, as you might expect, you can cut significantly faster. So I thought that was a useful reference table to show you. So, why should you use the recommended cutting speeds? Normally you'll only get a problem if you cut too fast. Cutting too slowly will just take you longer to do the job. If you cut steel too fast, you can get some horrendous screeching noises sometimes. Uh, that will also result in uh, a poor surface finish. You'll get a ragged cut and, and that's not what you want at all. Also with steel, remember, keep the cutting much slower than with aluminium. It creates a lot of heat and it definitely needs lubrication when you're cutting, even if you're just putting, say, some engine oil on, onto the component where the tool is running, it makes tremendous difference. Do not cut steel dry. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you found it interesting, useful and enjoyable.